ugly mess. Did you forget who I am? Every 86 Transformer in Michael Bay movies. Michael Bay's Transformer saga has been a visual delight for its audience. The CGI effects used to showcase the robotic transformation are spectacular. While the stories are loosely adapted from the animated series, the films also introduced new characters. The five films directed by Michael Bay and the sixth film that he produced showcased an exhaustive list of minor and major Cybertronian characters. <laughs> These characters have their very own importance, even if that accounted for less than a minute of screen presence. The characters have their unique set of abilities and minds of their own. In today's video, we will explore every character from the Transformer movies, whether minor or major. It will certainly be long, and it is advised to sideline all other work while watching. With all that said, hold your horses as we are beginning to explore every character in Michael Bay's Transformer series. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Optimus Prime the first on our list is Optimus Prime, the leader of Autobots. Back in time when Cybertron was inhabitable, that is, before the fallen corrupted Megatron, Optimus was the leader of Cybertron Science Division, researching on Allspark. He was also the last of the dynasty of Primes. He was kept hidden from Megatronus Prime, aka the Fallen, who was then assassinating his lineage. Fallen then corrupted Megatron by promising him the strength of the Primes in exchange for his loyalty. In response to Megatron's attempts to get hold of the Allspark and conquer other planets, Optimus took over the leadership of the Autobots and opposed Megatron and his Decepticons. Optimus was aware of the potential havoc Megatron could inflict if he had the Allspark and was willing to stop him at all costs. Optimus ordered his people to jettison the Allspark into deep space with the need to divert the risks. Without the Allspark, Cybertron perished and so did his people. Optimus travelled across the universe with a handful of Autobots and reached Earth. I'm in The first Cybertronians created the Primes, and Optimus being the last of them possessed their might. He can transform into a Peterbilt 379 semi-trailer truck and can be matched only by Megatron and Lockdown. He is impervious to all sorts of damage and is highly durable. He also possessed Cybertronian healing. The only time he was harmed brutally was when Megatron impaled him through his spark. Optimus also had a wide range of artillery, including an iron blaster, barrage cannons, a machine gun, and a dual energon sword, handheld energon sword, rusty dual energon sword, knuckle spikes, energon hooks, energon axe, and a shield. Our world heals, and theirs dies. A world reborn. Quintessa. The next character is loosely based on the Quintessons from the Transformer 1984 animated series, who were bizarre mechanical beings of an ancient race. Quintessa from the live action films made her appearance in Transformers The Last Night and is known also as the Great Deceiver. She claimed to be the creator of the Primes and wanted Optimus Prime to destroy Earth, believing it to be the dark cosmic entity Unicron. Back in history, when 12 Cybertronian knights learned her motives of draining Earth's energy to make Cybertron functional, they stole the technology and hid it on Earth. In the movie, she brainwashed Optimus and made him do her bidding. She even brought her army, the Infernocons, and dead Cybertron to Earth's atmosphere using her space bridge. Bumblebee finally defeated her, while Vivian deactivated the machine by removing the staff. She had, however, survived and took refuge on Earth, disguised as a human. Die, and your world will be reborn. Nemesis Prime. Quintessa, as shown in the movie, is a powerful space sorceress with a wide array of powers. She had a staff of power with which she could channel energy as she did in the movie, using Earth's energy to rejuvenate Cybertron. She could project bolts of electricity and fire, and also possessed telekinesis. Being a sorceress, she could hypnotize her subjects, making them her obedient slaves. She previously reverted Galvatron back to Megatron, signifying that she could alter Cybertronian physiology at her will. 
It is not shown if Quintessa could fly, but she could levitate in her human form. Optimus, you forget your place. Sentinel Prime Sentinel Prime appeared in the 2011 Transformers movie Transformers Dark of the Moon. Like Optimus, Sentinel also belonged to the dynasty of the Primes and at some point mentored Optimus. Both Megatron and Optimus Prime respected him. During the Cybertronian Civil War, he was known to have been lost forever in space, which was later revealed to be fake. After he betrayed the Autobots, it was revealed that all this while Sentinel lied to them. During the war, he made a secret pact with Megatron to help recreate their home world. As planned, he had to place hundreds of Megatron space bridge pillars on Earth, which would transform Earth into Cybertron. However, due to heavy damages taken by Megatron's ship towards the Ark, he crash-landed on the dark side of the Moon, entering his stasis lock. Being one of the Prime, Sentinel Prime is highly revered by Optimus and Megatron alike and can be considered as strong as Optimus Prime, if not more. He is a master combatant and a master leader. He had his ancient Primax blade, which is a highly versatile double-sided sword and a shield. He carried a cosmic rust cannon, which, if fired on any metal, would transform it into rust and disintegrate it. He used it to kill Ironhide. On Earth, he adapted to the vehicle mode of the Rosenbauer Panther fire truck. The transport services of pillars that were used to form a space bridge were his creation. Megatron The next on our list is Megatron, the brutal leader of the Decepticons and the main antagonist of the Transformers series. He is ruthless when it comes to achieving his goals and risks the lives of his troops and even himself. Back in time, when Cybertron was inhabitable, he was a brother to Optimus. Both were mentored by Sentinel Prime and Megatron was appointed as the commander of the Cybertron's defense forces to protect the planet. Believing that he was Sentinel's favorite student, he started hating Optimus Prime. Fallen capitalized on this and ensnared him to revive the Decepticons and wage war against Optimus. During the Cybertronian Civil War, when the Autobots jettisoned the old spark, his unreasonable urge for victory led him to search for it, which resulted in him spending centuries buried in the Arctic. Megatron is the strongest Decepticon and one of the strongest Cybertronians. He is a master combatant and an expert marksman. He possesses a genius devil intellect and is an excellent tactician. His leadership is somewhat flawed as his decisions and strategies have no consideration for the safety of him and his army. His sword is one of the strongest Cybertronian weapons and has managed to cut through Optimus Prime's armor, which otherwise is impervious to all sorts of attacks. On Earth, he adapted the appearance and transformed it into the Mac Titan tank truck. Shockwave. The next character on our list is one of the big guns of the Decepticon army. Post-Cybertron Civil War, when Megatron left to hunt for the old spark, Shockwave was stationed on Cybertron to guard it for Megatron. Shockwave arrived on Earth but was unaware of Megatron's journey in his hunt and remained in stasis mode. The Russians later discovered him and built a facility to contain him. His silhouette during World War I in 1917 was also captured, signifying that he took part in it. He was an unrivaled scientist with high efficiency. He lacked emotion and is merciless. He is as strong as Megatron and is willing to destroy any Autobot coming his way. With the ability to transform into a Cybertronian tank, Shockwave is undoubtedly one of the strongest and scariest of soldiers of the Decepticon army. Amongst the notable weapons, Shockwave has a hand cartridge cannon capable of inflicting high lethal damage and a multi-rocket launcher. He also used an arm blade and a slingshot. Bumblebee If not amongst the list of heavily armored Cybertronians, Bumblebee is surely the coolest of them all. After adapting to the vehicle mode of the fifth generation Chevrolet Camaro, Bumblebee's transformations are one of the most fascinating of the CGI moments in the Michael Bay Transformers series. While in the Michael Bay directed series, a damaged Bumblebee is found by Sam Witwicky, the Bumblebee movie, which served as a prequel to the first five live-action movies, explained Bumblebee's arrival on 
Earth. The live-action film was directed by Travis Knight and produced by Michael Bay. On Cybertron, when the Autobots are overwhelmed by the Decepticon forces, Optimus Prime manages to send his remaining Autobots to deep space for a hideout. He sent Bumblebee to Earth in order to establish a base for the Autobots. Bumblebee crash-landed on Earth, where the Sector 7 troops were having a training exercise. After a brief struggle with them, when Bumblebee managed to establish reasoning, Decepticon seeker Blitzwing arrived and launched a brutal attack on Bumblebee. Blitzwing destroyed his voice box and damaged Bumblebee's memory core, but was finally defeated and destroyed by Bumblebee. He escaped by scanning a 1967 Volkswagen Beetle and transforming into it. Bumblebee is a warrior who has a bottomless well of luck, courage and conviction. He is an expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant. He is also the best scout for Optimus, being small and agile. He has two Energon blasters embedded in his arms, an Energon shield, a plasma gun and rockets on his wrists. Lockdown Lockdown is neither a Decepticon nor an Autobot. He is a hired mercenary who never fails once set on a mission. Even the Decepticons are afraid of Lockdown. At the beginning of the Transformers Age of Extinction, Lockdown ruthlessly kills Autobot Ratchet after he denied revealing Prime's location. The creators tasked him to find Optimus Prime and bring him alive. He was fed up with the Autobots and the Decepticons for their never-ending battle and so he formed an alliance with the human organization Cemetery Wind, who were on their mission to hunt down every single Cybertronian residing on Earth. Lockdown was once a Decepticon and he was left behind out of fear of betrayal. Lockdown is a ruthless bounty hunter who has no sympathy for anyone. Lockdown is loaded with a wide range of heavy Cybertronian artillery. He has a head mount cannon, shoulder mounted rocket launchers, arm blasters, arm swords, a spark extractor, grenades and a shield. In his vehicle mode, he transforms into a Lamborghini Aventador. Lockdown is neither from the Decepticons nor the Autobots. Ironhide Autobots resident weapons specialist and Optimus Prime's old friend Ironhide is one of the most consistent members of the Autobots appearing in all of the Transformer movies. Unlike his friend Optimus, Ironhide is more practical and does not hold back in a fight. He is more than a little trigger happy and has enough replacement parts capable of building a small army. Ironhide is willing to push all limits to get the job done when it comes to taking down the evil Decepticons. Ironhide is one of the oldest Autobots and is a bank of war tactics and combat strategies. Optimus often consults him during fights. He is heavily armored with artillery equivalent to a military facility of a small country. His battle experiences can be made from his scarred paint and chrome chipped by shrapnel. He can transform into a modified GMC Topkick C4500 pickup truck and he has the ability to transmute his body into an almost impenetrable metal. He is one of the big guns for the Autobots and will fight for as long as he has ammunition to take down Decepticons. Yeah. He's back! He's alive! Optimus is here! Hound. Hound was a highly skilled Autobot commando and a technical specialist. He was the second in command of the Autobots in Transformer Age of Extinction and also became the new medical officer after Ratchet got killed by lockdown. Hound had a flair for warfare and there was almost no mission he would hesitate to take part in. Hound is a skilled gunman and had a wide list of heavy weaponry. He can transform into a modified version of Oshkosh Defense Medium Tactical Vehicle and with the list of artillery and his love for war, he is a tough Cybertronian to take down. His list of weapons includes a handheld machine gun, a large cannon, an iron gun, two quad guns, a pentagon cannon, a triple barreled machine gun, a harpoon, double and tripled barreled guns, grenades and a knife. Grimlock is a Dinobot, a section of the Autobots who took the appearance of dinosaurs on Earth. As shown in the Transformers Age of Extinction, the Dinobots, referred to as legendary knights, were imprisoned by lockdown. They were later freed by Optimus and asked for assistance in the battle against Galvatron, which they accepted, but only after Grimlock took a small fight with Optimus. 
With the Dinobots, Autobots gained the upper hand in the fight and defeated Galvatron. Dinobots, we charge together! Grimlock is a powerful and ancient warrior, taking the form of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. He was amongst the legendary knights as mentioned by Lockdown. Grimlock is capable of causing havoc for his opponents but is not stronger than Optimus Prime. Amongst weapons, Grimlock used a spike ball, a club. When in his dinosaur mode, Grimlock used his fangs and tail as lethal weapons capable of inflicting heavy damage. He also used a flamethrower. Crosshairs Crosshairs is an Autobot warrior who is also known as a weapons master and armorer. In pre-production, his name was supposed to be Slingshot but later changed to Crosshairs. He is an excellent marksman and a notable soldier of the Autobot army. He is very calculative about the use of his ammunition and does not like missing his shots or wasting ammunition. His conservative consumption of ammo makes him last longer in battle even when his opponents are out of ammo. Go into space. Ah, here's a little juju be ready. Hello. Adapting to the vehicle mode of Corvette Stingray C7, he is seen to have parachutes. He can fly and is pretty good at it and is also good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. He carried twin turbo guns capable of inflicting serious damage to his opponent. He usually liked taking his enemies down by surprise and with his precision getting the job done in the best possible way. At last. There is hope after all. Drift. With the ability to adapt to the vehicle mode of a 2013 Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitesse, Drift is a former Decepticon transformed into an Autobot Commando. After fighting alongside the Decepticons for years, he realized that his swords serve better if used for the Autobots. Drift's unique selling point is not just his skill but his composure. His calm and strategic methods mostly lead him to victory. Despite being a part of the Autobots, Drift is yet to completely overcome his aggressive nature. If spooked or felt endangered, his aggression responds and he is still prone to manic attacks. He's very little. Appearing in Transformer, Age of Extinction and Transformers The Last Night, Drift was a triple changer adapting to the vehicle modes of a 2013 Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitesse, a Sikorsky S97 Raider helicopter and a 2017 Mercedes AMG GTR. Drift is an excellent swordsman and hand-to-hand -hand combatant. He usually fights with the swords but can also shoot missiles, especially during a battle in the air. His calm nature adds up to him being a brilliant tactician. Dragonstorm Dragonstorm is a three-headed dragon who is either a single non-combining bot or a combined formation of Strong Rain and Dragonicus. As shown in Michael Bay's film Transformer The Last Night, in 484 CE, Dragonstorm was formed at Merlin's to wipe out the Saxons, which it did and helped Camelot win its battle. It is also stated that Dragonstorm was the gestalt form of the legendary Twelve Knights who opposed Quintessa. Dragonstorm was along the Autobots and during their battle against the Decepticons, it was shown that Stormrain, Dragonicus, Steelbane along with nine other Guardian Knights combined to form this massive beastly dragon who fought viciously against the Decepticons. With Dragonstorm on their side, the Autobots grabbed a better chance for victory and after winning the war, Dragonstorm is shown to fly off to its home world. Dragonstorm's primary weapon was a flamethrower but its wrath is a contribution of its size and vicious nature. Soundwave reporting. Soundwave. Soundwave is a Decepticon and one of the most loyal supporters of Megatron. With the ability to transcribe frequencies, he is the communications officer of the Decepticons. Stationed above the Earth's atmosphere, Soundwave is shown to tap into Earth's communication satellite to extract information. Unlike the Generation 1 version, which transforms into a recorder cassette, he is shown to transform into a Cybertronian jet. On Earth, he usually transformed into Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG. He is shown to have two minions, Ravage and Laserbeak, both capable of executing critical tasks. In the comics and animation, he had a few more minions named Ratbat, Buzzsaw, Beastbox and Howlback. 
Soundwave is lethal in two ways. Firstly, his sonic cannons, which can cause lethal damage in an elastic medium. And secondly, Megatron himself, owing to his loyalty and efficiency. He can fly in space, hack any network, and probably could have destroyed human civilization in the Transformer movie titled Rise of the Fallen. Along with this, he is shown to possess tentacles and a small shotgun cannon. He also has twin turbo cannons. Sideswipe. Sideswipe was an Autobot combat specialist with a thrill for fighting. In Transformer Dark of the Moon, he was the second in command after Ironhide's death. In different iterations, Sideswipe is stated to be mentored by Ironhide in the art of war. He is one of the most efficient Autobots and has a flair for engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat. His assistance is highly important for the Autobots. Despite having guns and blasters, Sideswipe relies more on his melee weapons. His reflexes exhaust all adjectives and his combat scenes are a treat for the eyes as his fights are an epitome of finesse, especially the way he finished sideways in the movie Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. He has a set of back guns and machine guns but fights primarily with his swords. He has a double barrel shotgun and missile launchers. Sentinel Prime once knocked him out but he did manage to survive. <laughs> Starscream Like Bumblebee, Starscream is one of the most recurring characters in the Transformers franchise. He is a Decepticon and has shown his dislike for Megatron as their leader in all forms of media. He always dreamt of overthrowing Megatron and becoming the leader of the Decepticons. There are frequent banters between him and Megatron whom he often taunted when he failed. Although the movies have not showcased Starscream's distaste and efforts to overthrow Megatron, the animated show has several moments of the dispute between the two. He believed that both Optimus and Megatron had lost their minds in fulfilling their own agendas, for which a new leader like him was needed to restore Cybertron. Unlike the live-action films, animated shows provided more detail to the character's persona. There was once a very tragic ending of Starscream where he sacrificed himself to unite Galvatron and Optimus against Unicron, while there was another story where Galvatron disintegrated him after being declared the leader of the Decepticons post Megatron's death. Starscream in the movies was shown to be quite inefficient and futile. An explosive planted by Sam Witwicky killed him. Starscream's primary strength is fighting in the air. On air, he is a tough foe and can give a hard time to any Cybertronian. His high speed and ability to attack while flying at high speed give him an edge over others. He used a homing missile launcher, a rotary machine gun and a buzzsaw. He adapted and transformed into a Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor jet. Galvatron as shown in Michael Bay's Transformers saga, Galvatron was a man-made Transformer who later led the Decepticons in Transformers Age of Extinction. The origin of Galvatron in the live-action movie is quite different from the animated series. In the Transformers cartoon, Galvatron was a Megatron reincarnated by the Dark Lord Unicron. Unicron enhanced his strength, reprogrammed him and provided him with minions. There are many different iterations in the comics, but they all had one thing in common, his insane rage and temper. In the movies, after the Battle of Chicago, the humans despised the Transformers and considered all of them a threat to their survival. Geologist Darcy Tyrrell, after learning about the creators who used devices called seeds to cover the entire Earth with a metal called Transformium, excavated it for KSI, who used it to make Transformer drones. KSI CEO Joshua Joyce, in an attempt to enhance global defenses against the Transformers, used the Transformium and a deceased Cybertronian head to create a prototype soldier. He used Megatron's head to create Galvatron. When KSI launched Galvatron against Optimus, they watched him take his own decisions. Galvatron was soon free from KSI's control and it is revealed that it is Megatron in a new body. Galvatron is Megatron in a new body for which most of his abilities are identical to Megatron. His new body, gifted by KSI, could transform into a 2014 Freightliner Argosy cab over truck. With Joshua's improvisations, he could also disintegrate into small Transformium particles and recombine, which helped him dodge attacks. Even Bumblebee was shocked after witnessing the ability of Galvatron. During hand-to-hand -hand combat with Optimus Prime, he let Optimus drive his swords through his chest, but nothing happened to him. Scrapper 
Scrapper is a Constructicon. According to Transformers Generation 1, Constructicons are Decepticons created by Megatron and Scrapper was their engineer. He created the design of their combined form, the Devastator. In the film Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Scrapper is seen along with Longhaul, Rampage, Ravage and Bone Crusher as a part of Starscream's Decepticon group. During the fight between Autobots and the Decepticons, he was killed in an airstrike. A similar version of Scrapper was seen in Transformers Dark of the Moon but not officially declared. Scrapper transformed into a front load shovel and also formed the right hand of Devastator. Not much is mentioned about his origins in the movies. He was calm and composed and held his loyalty to Megatron. Scavenger Scavenger is also a Constructicon and appeared only in Transformer Revenge of the Fallen during the battle in Egypt. He combined with the other Constructicons, Long Haul, Scrapper, Hightower, Overload and Skipjack to form the Deadly Devastator. After trying to suck in everything around using his Vortex Grinder, Devastator was ordered by Megatron to unveil the Star Harvester from the Great Pyramid of Giza and unearth it by knocking the top clean. However, the US kid locked into the coordinates of the Devastator as given by Simmons and fired the experimental railgun, killing Devastator and all his components, including Scavenger. The Scavenger's tactical fighting advantage was because of his wheels and huge body. When combined with the other Constructicons, he formed the upper torso of the Devastator. He was created by Megatron and could be transformed into a Terex ONK RH-400 Hydraulic Morning Excavator. The Scavenger's individual powers or weaponry are not shown in the film. However, in the animated series, he is shown to have great sense of geology and carries a laser pistol capable of shooting 11 areas. He could sense fuels, metals and other important stations underground. Get out of here! My weapon will stop the time! Hot Rod Hot Rod is an arrogant and confident Autobot and also Bumblebee's brother-in-law. He has a French accent which he hates but cannot get rid of and adapted to the vehicle mode of the 2017 Lamborghini Centenario LP7704. He had also fought in World War II with Bumblebee alongside the Allied forces. Years later, after World War II, he became a close ally of Edmund Burton who had tasked him to protect his daughter, Vivienne Wembley. In the Transformers cartoon, both Hot Rod and Wounded Megatron were trapped inside Unicron. In order to combat the newly evolved Megatron, aka Galvatron, Hot Rod used the Autobot Matrix of leadership and evolved into Rodimus Prime. In this form, as shown in the comics, he lacked self-confidence, questioning his own decisions. Hot Rod, as derived from Hot Rodimus, is yet another tough Autobot. He is highly skilled in combat and one of the most important members of the Autobots. He has shotgun blasters and machine guns from World War II. Along with these weapons, he also had a time gun which could create temporary temporal bubbles in which time slows down for everything within it. This weapon is shown to be an extremely important add-on for Hot Rod as not only did it help him to fight Megatron but also save Vivian and Cade during a high freefall. <laughs> Ratchet. Ratchet from the Transformers Cinematic Universe is an Autobot medic who had joined the team to save lives and not kill. He hated violence and in the Generator 1 series, he is shown to be a party lover. Uh, uh, no! Please! Hold your fire! Voiced by Robert Foxworth, he appeared as one of the major antagonists of the 2007 Transformers movie and was also present in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and Transformers Dark of the Moon. In Transformers Age of Extinction, he was killed by the Bounty Hunter Lockdown for not revealing Optimus Prime's hiding location. He also appeared in Bumblebee and was voiced by Dennis Singletray. His closest comrade is RC and they both hate Lockdown. On Earth, Ratchet adapted to the vehicle mode of a Hummer H2 search and rescue utility truck. Being the Autobot medical officer, Ratchet is highly dedicated to saving all life forms and it is believed that every Autobot have their sparks repaired by Ratchet at least once. He is brave and does not think twice before putting his own life on the front line to save his fellow teammates. Despite having a dislike for wars, he carried beam-infused Energon machine guns and Energon cannon and missiles. He also had a healing laser which he used to fix the Cybertronians and a circular saw. Jazz Jazz was the first lieutenant of the Autobots and appeared in the 2007 Transformers film. 
he had a happy your lucky demeanor and helped provide relief from the seriousness of prime and ironhide he was a talker for which his comrades often teased him he is one of the few transformers whose appearance in the films is not altered from the generation 1 animated series in the animated series he was the right hand man of optimus and special operations head as he always responded well to improvisations during battle he had a huge flair for earth music and its culture and even programmed earthly slang and lingos in his vocabulary his style is what makes him different from the rest as he believed that when things have to be done they need to be done in a style that makes him one of the coolest transformers in the franchise during his combat he preferred being orchestrated by loud music which adds up to his slick moves unfortunately he was shot and ripped apart by megatron during the battle of mission city on earth jazz adapted to the vehicle mode of a pontiac solstice gxp weekend racer concept car amongst notable weaponry he carried a crescent cannon and magnetic claws Slug was one of the Dinobots or the legendary knights who appeared in Transformers Age of Extinction. As in the Generation 1 series, Slug was extremely mean and violent. The Dinobots were themselves a violent section of the Autobots who, unlike Optimus, are merciless. They all had a distaste for Prime's benevolent nature, but Slug and Sludge shared an intense dislike for Optimus. Slug's violent nature often questioned how he was not a Decepticon. In The Age of Extinction, he was shown to be one of Lockdown's prisoners who was soon to be delivered to the creators along with Grimlock, Scorn and Strafe. He later joined the Autobots after being freed from Lockdown by Optimus to fight the Decepticons in Hong Kong. Slug also appeared in Transformers The Last Knight along with three other mini Dinobots hiding in Case's junkyard. Slug was a savage warrior who transformed into a robotic triceratops with a spiked ball sword, deadly fangs and horns. Slug usually attacked with his huge ball, horns or fangs in his dinosaur mode. In his warrior mode, he used his spike ball and sword to inflict lethal damage on his opponents. Scorn is another Dinobot appearing in Transformers Age of Extinction who transformed into a three-tailed Spinosaurus. Like the rest of the Dinobots from the movie, he was one of Lockdown's prisoners who later joined the Autobot forces. Although there are not many depictions in the movie, Scorn is believed to be the most intelligent Dinobot and a demolition expert. He is an obedient warrior who is diligent in following orders from his leader. During the battle in Hong Kong, he allowed Crosshairs to ride him, and after the battle, Crosshairs gave him the nickname Spike. Scorn never appeared in the original Generation 1 animated series and not much is depicted in the movies. The Dinobots are strong and vicious and Slug is no different. His massive size is what makes him undefeatable, where he used his tail whip, gauntlet, spikes and fangs to demolish every opponent. In his bot mode, he wielded the scrap maker sword to inflict lethal damage on his opponents. He be free at last. Thank Megatron, I'm free at last. Nitro Zeus. Nitro Zeus, also known as Nitro, is a Decepticon with a gangster attitude. He is loud-mouthed and a self-aggrandizing jerk, but was powerful enough to live up to his words. Nitro is a powerful and relentless hunter who likes stalking first and then destroying his enemies. He was disturbed after the death of Shockwave and blamed the humans and the Autobots for it. His head was also similar to Shockwave, which often questioned if he was one of the KSI versions of Decepticons. After the death of Starscream, he was assigned second in command after Megatron. Sometime after the Battle of Chicago, Nitro Zeus was captured by TRF or Transformers Reaction Force. He was held captive until Megatron managed to kidnap two TRF agents and blackmail the organization into releasing Nitro and many similar Decepticons. While being held captive by the humans, he acquired all personal information about his captors. Despite disliking humans, Nitro Zeus was interactive with the humans and even adapted to the gangster attitude. He could transform into a Saab JS-39 Gripen jet and was a lethal opponent of the Autobots. He was armed with heavy missiles, machine guns on his shoulders, an arm cannon, a crossbow blaster, and a curved axe blade. Strafe appearing in Transformer Age of Extinction, Strafe is another Dinobot who shared a similar story with the rest of the Dinobots. 
He was imprisoned by lockdown and later released by Optimus Prime. He then joined the Autobot forces, bringing victory for them at their battle in Hong Kong. However, unlike other Dinobots, he was calm, composed, and even friendly with humans. In the Generation 1 continuity series, he was known as Swoop. In battle, he took the form of a two-headed pterodactyl, attacking his opponents with his mighty sword and crossbow. <laughs> Barricade. Barricade is a Decepticon who has arrived on Earth in the first Transformers film released in 2007. He was hunting down Sam Witwicky to extract information about the old spark and retrieve it. When Frenzy downloaded Project Iceman files from Air Force One, they discovered that the location of the old spark was imprinted with a pair of glasses that belonged to Sam's ancestors. Once he reached Earth, he adapted the vehicle modes of Selene S281 Ford Mustang police car with To Punish and Enslave imprinted on it. In fact, when he was interrogating Sam, he resembled a bad cop. Barricade is one of the most ruthless warriors of the Decepticon army and is undoubtedly a threat to anyone coming in his way. After appearing in the first transforming form, where he is shown to flee away after defeat, Barricade reappeared in Transformers Dark of the Moon during the Battle of Chicago. He even killed Wheeljack. The Decepticons were defeated, but Barricade survived and later adapted to the new vehicle mode of the Ford Mustang police cruiser. He also appeared in the franchise's fifth movie, but what happened to him after the battle is yet to be known. Barricade had a wide array of weapons, which were revealed in the Transformers movies. He is shown to carry a mace, heat scanners, a Cybertronian gun, a laser gun, brass knuckles, frenzy ejects, and an arm machine gun. Only round, per favore, and stay there! Mirage or Dino. In the Transformers Dark of the Moon, a new set of Autobot soldiers were introduced and one of them was Mirage, also known as Dino. With the vehicle mode of smooth and badass, Ferrari 458 Mirage had exceptional combat skills. He was introduced to assisting Wheeljack, Bumblebee and Sideswipe in a mission to take out an illegal nuclear weapons site in the Middle East. At this point, the humans and the Autobots were allies and their military operations were often assisted by the Autobots. When the Autobots learned that the Decepticons were targeting Sentinel Prime for his space bridge technology, they tried protecting Sentinel by escorting him to base. During their journey, they were attacked by Dreads, which have a scintillating fight sequence involving Mirage, Sideswipe and Bumblebee. Mirage is an excellent hand-to-hand -hand combatant and his fights are indeed a visual delight. He used grappling hooks to get hold of his enemies and blades to strike lethal damage. Although he prefers close combat, he carries a sniper rifle and an assault rifle. Mirage also has this unique ability to go invisible. Jetfire The name Jetfire has been used for several characters in the Transformers franchise throughout different media. Going by the name, it is generally referred to a Transformer with fight capabilities or a space shuttle. However, in the Transformers cinematic universe, Jetfire was shown in Transformer Revenge of the Fallen as an ancient Decepticon warrior and one of Fallen's servants. When Optimus was dead, Sam and the other Autobots came looking for Jetfire, who, as stated by Wheelie, was the board's chairman. They found him hidden in his vehicle mode of SR-71 Blackbird and awakened him using the power of Allspark. Upon awakening, he transformed into his hot mode. He teleported everyone to Egypt where he informed them about the Sun Harvester and Matrix of Leadership as it was the only way Optimus could be revived. He also shared his distaste for Megatron and the Decepticons. Later, during the battle, he sided with the Autobots but was wounded by Scorponok. He then sacrificed himself to provide all the necessary parts and energy to Optimus Prime, using which he defeated Fallen and Megatron. Although not much is shown about his weapons or abilities, he is shown to carry an axe, a heavy laser machine gun, charged shell cannon and missiles. All these were attached to Optimus. His unique power was to use his space bridge transformation tech to teleport through large or short distances. <laughs> Blackout. When it comes to the list of powerful and violent Decepticons, Blackout is sure to top the list. He was loyal to Megatron and had a symbiotic companion named Scorponok. He is quite silent and calm when not in battle and adapted to the vehicle mode of the Sikorsky MH-53 helicopter and appeared in the 2007 Transformers film. He was attacked with lasers and fired down by F-22 Raptors, following which he died. Being one of the fiercest Decepticon warriors, Blackout had rotor blades, a machine gun, and energy 
anti-wave cannon, a cheat cannon, and an explosive photon rifle. We will never end the ship. We designed the damn thing, didn't we? we Roadbuster. Went. Roadbuster was a part of the Wreckers, who are a team of Autobot commandos. Roadbuster appeared in Transformer Dark of the Moon and was adapted from its Generation 1 counterpart. However, his persona is different in the movies. Roadbuster in the animated series was a charismatic commando who usually had no clue about a life without war, for which he is mostly quiet, but in the movie is quite vocal. Adapting to the vehicle mode of an armoured NASCAR Chevrolet Impala Roadbuster had a unique Scottish accent. There is not much about his origin and he appeared only in Dark of the Moon, serving under the leadership of Optimus Prime. When Sentinel Prime and Megatron conquered Chicago and tried bringing Cybertron on Earth, Roadbuster fought along the Autobots and managed to stop Megatron and Sentinel once and for all. The very appearance of Roadbuster showcased his love for weapons. His armoured car is enhanced with numerous weapons which seemed extremely useful against the Decepticons. He had a minigun, a rocket launcher, a chainsaw and five rapid-fire machine guns. Mixmaster Mixmaster was a Decepticon and a Constructicon. Mixmaster's origin is unclear throughout the series. According to the Generation 1 continuity, Mixmaster and other Constructicons were nice and friendly Cybertronians who were reprogrammed and made to join the Decepticons by Megatron. He served as a weapons designer for the Decepticons and was the leader of the Constructicons along with Scavenger. When combined with the other Constructicons, he formed the head and neck of the Devastator. In the movie Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, when the Allspark was retrieved, Mixmaster along with other Constructicons who drove down under the waters of North Atlantic to retrieve Megatron. Adapting to the vehicle mode of a black and silver Mac Metroliner concrete mixer, Mixmaster spent his entire life mastering chemicals. He is a genius when mixing chemicals and creating poisons and explosives, hence the name Mixmaster. Mixmaster makes all-powerful warheads and dangerous venoms of the Decepticons. He also carried four shields and explosives along with a railgun. Jolt. Jolt was an Autobot who appeared in Michael Bay's Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Later, after the release of Age of Extinction, it was inferred that Jolt was killed either by TRF or Cemetery Wind. Jolt was highly mischievous and an impulsive prankster who went crazy during battles. His crazy acts confused his opponents, giving him a better chance of taking them down. It is to be noted that his skills completely backed his crazy nature. He might go bonkers but surely has it in control. Two years since Megatron's death, Jolt was called by Optimus Prime to reach Earth. Jolt was not amongst the Autobots who arrived on Earth in the first Transformers movie. Amongst notable weapons, Jolt carried two electrical whips and a blade. Cockman, what is, what is all this? End of the world, I thought a meal, a last meal. Cogman. Cogman was an Autobot headmaster appearing in Michael Bay's Transformers The Last Knight. Headmasters were a type of symbiotic variation of the Transformers. They are small in size and usually transform as a head of a bigger transformer. Cogman was a faithful manservant of the Burton family, safeguarding the Witwickens for over seven centuries. In the movie, he served as a butler, chauffeur and bodyguard for Sir Edmund Burton. He was usually very polite, but due to his long years of service, he has developed traits of bipolarity and often struggled with his recurring anger issues. In Legends comic version of Transformers, Cogman was among the Creons who are known for their heroism. The Creons defended the Legends world from the Decepticons. Cogman's size was that of a regular human, but he could transform into 2017 Aston Martin DB11. There are no scenes in the movie where we could see Cogman transform into a head or engage in a war, but he could launch missiles. Laserbeak Laserbeak is a minion of Soundwave who remained stored in his chest along with Ravage, Frenzy and Rumble. As shown in the origin animated series, Laserbeak served as Soundwave's surveillance drone. He is usually appointed to carry out tasks that Soundwave cannot attend. In the animated series, he was often sent to spy on the Autobots, which he always did fine. However, he is not just restricted to being a scout. As shown in the movie Transformers Dark of the Moon, Laserbeak was efficient enough to hunt down targets or even capture them. He is one of the most competent Decepticons and sure knows how to manifest on someone's fear. 
After the Chernobyl incident involving the Autobots against Shockwave and Driller, Laserbeak transformed into a robot similar to Bumblebee and met Madeline, who considered it a friendly robot. However, when her father arrived, Laserbeak transformed into his regular form and killed her father. Laserbeak could fly like a bird and is indistinguishable from long distances. It seemed that he killed more humans than any Decepticon. Amongst weapons, he carried a minigun. Stinger Like Galvatron from Transformers Age of Extinction, Stinger was also a man-made Transformer created by KSI's Joshua Joyce to strengthen human defenses against the Transformers. KSI initially controlled him, but later Galvatron managed to free him from KSI's control. He appeared similar to Bumblebee and could transform into his vehicle mode, which was a red and black Pagani Huartia. Like Galvatron, Stinger could undergo molecular transformation on his own, that is, his entire body could disintegrate and reshape into anything. Amongst notable weapons, Stinger carried a plasma cannon and crab claws. The Driller the Driller was Shockwave's pet and probably the most vicious Decepticon entity to be shown in the Transformers movie series. It is Cybertron's largest subterranean life form, capable of digging burrows into the ground and through buildings. There were two instances when Driller was set into battle and it gave a really hard time to the Autobots and the humans. It could bring carnage on any scale with huge, enormous metallic tentacles. Years before the Transformers were noticed on Earth, Driller and his master Shockwave had arrived on Earth and remained in stasis mode until the Russians discovered them. It is stated that the Master and Pet Duo were the cause of the Chernobyl disaster. Shockwave and Driller encounter Optimus at Chernobyl, where Optimus managed to slice off one of Driller's massive tentacles. Later, during the Battle of Chicago, Shockwave and the Driller's assistants helped the Decepticons conquer Chicago, proving to be a threat from below. Although Optimus Prime's swords managed to slice one or two tentacles, the Beast, along with its Master, did give a tough time to the mighty Autobot leader. Scorponok The portrayal of Scorponok in Michael Bay's Transformer series is quite different from the original animated series. In Transformers Generation 1 animated series, Scorponok was the leader of the Decepticon Headmasters and was bonded to Lord Zarak, the evil leader from Planet Nebula. He was a triple changer, switching from a giant robotic scorpion to a defense base to a partially autonomous armored vehicle, transforming into a robot armed with two cannons. In the movies, Scorponok had a symbiotic connection with Blackout, with whom it stayed, if not in battle. He appeared in the 2007 Transformers movie and also in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, when Jetfire killed him. Scorponok can dig burrows at super speed, which makes it difficult for any opponent to keep track of. He can ambush his targets, make quick, unexpected attacks on them and hide again. That's how his programming is done. His main drive is to hunt, destroy and hunt again. During the Battle of Egypt, he ambushed Jetfire and attacked him, causing noticeable damage. Following this, he was killed by Jetfire, marking the end of the vicious Cybertronian creature. Wheelie Wheelie was a sneaky Decepticon pawn who was sent to retrieve the old Spark Splinter from Michaela. However, he failed at it as Michaela caught sight of him and locked him up. Being caught, he revealed that he is afraid to return without the Splinter as Soundwave would have killed him. Later, after witnessing Jetfire's redemption for Autobots, he switched sides and became an ally for the Autobots and the humans. Wheelie appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, Dark of the Moon and The Last Night, where he is shown to have a big mouth. Wheelie could transform into a miniature version of the RC Ford F-Series monster truck. Wheelie was the third Transformer to have wheels instead of feet after Sideswipe and Bone Crusher. Brawl or Devastator As mentioned earlier, Devastator was a giant Decepticon combiner made up of Constructicons, Mixmaster, Overload, Hightower, Scrap Metal, Scrapper, Long Haul, Skipjack and Scavenger. He appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen during the Battle of Egypt. After all the Constructicons combined to form Devastator, it soon started inflicting its wrath by creating powerful gravity wells, sucking in everything like a black hole. He did it with the help of his vortex grinder in the mouth. 
he tried sucking in mud flap and skids but failed, after which Megatron ordered him to climb the Great Pyramid of Giza and unveil the Star Harvester. However, he was unsuccessful because Simmons had sent his coordinates to the US Kid Force, at which they fired the experimental railgun. The shot was on point and managed to destroy Devastator along with its components. Devastator is usually summoned to conduct homicide or large-scale destruction. Even in the Generation 1 series, Devastator served as one of the most lethal forces of Megatron. Devastator had multiple missile launchers, guns, rocket launchers and three grappling hooks. His most powerful attack was through his Vortex Grinder, which could suck anything and everything around him. Come on, Simmons, you said no work today. Let's get your pale ass legs and go to the beach. You always say five minutes. Top Spin. Top Spin is a part of the elite Autobot forces known as the Wreckers, who participated in the Battle of Chicago. He is the second in command after Leadfoot and the Wreckers and is usually not allowed to leave the premises of NASA. The Wreckers usually stayed there and helped human engineers. When Sentinel Prime ordered the Autobots to leave Earth, the Wreckers were the ones who had built the spaceship. Later years, shown in the Transformers The Last Night, Top Spin was one of the few Autobots who were given asylum in Cuba with Seymour Simmons, whom he constantly pestered to play volleyball with. Top Spin carried a wide range of artillery, starting with four chain guns, two power cannons, two shoulder cannons, claws and flamethrowers. His vehicle mode was an armored Chevrolet Impala. Separate. Slash down back in the Atlantic just as planned. <laughs> we ain't going. Leadfoot. Leadfoot is the last wrecker on our list and also the leader of them. Appearing first in Transformers Dark of the Moon, he too had a similar story working inside the premises of NASA, building their spaceship to leave Earth and then returning to kill some Decepticons in the Battle of Chicago. He has this huge flair for building new weapons, especially bigger and louder ones. He is a very good friend of Ironhide, who also happened to be a weapon specialist. He is, however, hunted down and killed by by lockdown in Transformers Age of Extinction. From a Transformer who loved louder and bigger weapons, one could only expect his collections to be quite magnificent, which it is. He carries a minigun, two rapid-fire chain guns, a steel jaw and a missile launcher. His vehicle mode is similar to that of Top Spin. Long Haul. Long Haul was another Constructicon serving Megatron and his Decepticons. He too shared the same fate as the rest of his fellow Constructicons and died at the end of Transformer Revenge of the Fallen. From what is known of him, he had arrived on Earth and adapted to the form of a Caterpillar 773B dump truck. He was one of the Constructicons who built the Star Harvesters. Long Haul was the grumpiest Decepticon who often abandoned his cargo and declared it to be lost. Among noticed weaponry, Long Haul had missiles, grenade launchers, a flamethrower and a healing laser. You need a bigger door! Onslaught. The Onslaught was a Decepticon and a Combaticon, who were military-themed Decepticons capable of combining into Bruticus Maximus. Onslaught was known for his genius-level strategy making, which made him one of the biggest assets of the Decepticons. It is not shown how, but he was arrested by the TRF and later freed to join the Decepticon army. All this happened because Megatron had captured two TRF agents and blackmailed the organization to releasing his crewmates in exchange for two of their members. Onslaught adapted to the vehicle mode of an armed truck and later upgraded to the Western Star 4900 SF tow truck. As shown in the movie Transformers The Last Night, he carried a radial rocket launcher and a laser machine gun. For close combat purposes, he used his claw hand. Grindor. Serving as one of the most loyal Decepticons, Grindor is a master strategist and an expert close combatant. His planning is well ahead of his opponents and, with his huge size, he is one deadly massive hulking Decepticon. He resembled Blackout and appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. When he was sent to kidnap Sam Witwicky, he did it with finesse and took them to a deserted facility. He was later seen hunting for Sam through the forest with Megatron and Starscream. When Optimus arrived, he was brutally destroyed by the Autobot leader. Prime sliced off his arms, slashed his chest and then ripped his head apart with his grappling hooks. Grinder adapted to the vehicle mode of Sikorsky CH-53E Super Stallion Helicopter and carried rotor blades, a machine gun and an Energon Wave Cannon. Demolisher with the adapted form of the Texas Hydraulic Mining Excavator, Demolisher is a deadly, gyroscopic unicycle of death. He is not among the intelligent ones and is a coward Decepticon when the Decepticons are found without any leader. 
His appearance is almost identical to Scavenger's and he is often confused. He is the second largest Transformer shown in the films after Devastator. He was also the guardian of a small Decepticon community. Mohawk! What up, fellas? Man, I want to kill you right now. Mohawk. Appearing only in Transformers The Last Night, Mohawk is like a motorbike punk wielding a knife and serving Megatron without reciprocation. He was one of the Decepticons who were captured by the TRF and later released by Megatron. Mohawk was blasted by Bumblebee but not revealed if dead or alive. Amongst notable weapons, he used knives and forks. Crowbar Appearing in the 2011 film, Transformers Dark of the Moon, Crowbar is a supporting antagonist with a special tech called Nanotech Sentries. When the Autobots arrived on the moon to investigate Sentinel Prime, the Dreads managed to return to Earth with the Autobots, where they disguised themselves as Earth vehicles. The Dreads then attack Sentinel Prime, who Bumblebee, Dino and Ironhide guided. While one of them dies in the hands of Dino and Bumblebee, the remaining two pretend to surrender and then throw a spiked crowbar at Ironhide. They attack again only to get destroyed by Ironhide. The Dreads have a deadly appearance with metallic hair and are armed with Cybertronian guns and Cybertronian spears. The Dreads adapted to the vehicle mode of the 2011 Chevrolet Suburban Police Van. Frenzy. Appearing in the 2007's Transformers Frenzy was a minicon Decepticon serving Barricade. In Generation 1 Transformers animation, Frenzy was Rumble's brother and a crazy minicon with a war lust. The movie portrayed him as an extremely creepy and a killer threat for the humans, if not the big Autobots. He stuck onto the heavily guarded Air Force One, disguised as a CD player boombox and tried hacking into the communications network. He failed to complete his task as government agent Maggie Madsen shut down the servers after sensing the threat but managed to upload a deadly virus. The virus fetched him information about Project Iceman and the All Spark. This information later helped the Decepticons to find Sam and his ancestors' glasses, where the location of the Allspark was embedded. Frenzy is small and sneaky and manages to blend into his surroundings so that he is nearly invisible to most. He is an excellent spy but loves causing chaos and carnage all around. He is really hard to kill because of his decentralized modular nervous system. Frenzy can reconfigure his alternate mode at lightning fast speed with the aid of his hyperreactive trance, scanning and reforming systems. He carried shuriken discs and had a laser gun. <laughs> Xbox 360 Robot the old spark is the source of creation for mechanical life forms. It contains the power to grant life to machines. In the 2007 Transformers film, during the Battle of Mission City, a man was carrying an Xbox 360. The Autobots and the Decepticons were then fighting for the old spark. In the chaos and hassle, a surge was released from the old spark, which transformed the Xbox 360 into a robot with arms and legs. The machine was inside a box, and before it could come out of it, the man dropped it and ran. Post-battle, Lennox's soldiers surveyed the city and might have destroyed the robot or kept it alive at their base. To being a baby about it, Squeaks. It's all right. Squeaks. Squeaks appeared in Transformers The Last Night and was a small and friendly Autobot serving as the film's supporting protagonist. He stayed in hiding in the ruins of Chicago with his best friends, Isabella and Canopy. In a TRF attack, the trio lost Canopy and the Squeaks' right arm. Squeaks is not among the big and powerful Autobot warriors, but is immensely brave and protective of his friends. Despite his size and weak appearance, he carried a massive fortification blaster. He adapted to the vehicle design of a scooter. Oh, good. They're here. My name's Q. I do hope you have answers for him. I've never... Wheeljack was one of the best Autobot scientists. His inventions and weapon designs are incredible and he contributed his knowledge to provide unimaginable weapons for his fellow Autobots and NEST. He even appeared like a nerdy old scientist. Wheeljack adapted to the vehicle mode of Mercedes-Benz E550 and was not really interested in fighting. He still carried a wide range of weapons, starting with boomsticks, grapple gloves, a turbo gun, a buzzsaw, a Naginata staff and a Cybertronian electric machine gun. The 
Fallen. The Fallen was the prime antagonist of Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. The Fallen, originally known as Megatronus Prime, was one of the 13 Primes who betrayed his brother for his lust for power. He was the first Decepticon who later manipulated Megatron to form the Decepticons army. When Megatron was brought back to life by the Constructicons, he, along with Starscream, united with his master and apologized for their failure. The Fallen forgave him and gave him the task of finding the Star Harvester, using which he intended to erase all life forms from several worlds. He was finally killed in the Battle of Egypt by Optimus Prime after he received energy and machine parts from Jetfire. Megatronus Prime, or the Fallen, was from the dynasty of Primes and possessed enormous power. He was semi-immortal and does not age. He possessed telekinesis and regenerative durability. He was strong and good at combat perception and combat empowerment. The Fallen could manipulate objects and could also teleport. He carried a shock spear and used it as a weapon to fight his opponents. Ravage Ravage was a minicon and a minion of Soundwave. Both in the animated series and the live-action movies, Ravage is shown to perform tasks with high efficiency. Similar to Laserbeak, Ravage also makes up for a great spy. Ravage appears in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. When he spoke, it sounded as if he was reciting Decepticon code and took the appearance of a vicious metallic jaguar. In the movie, he was sent by Soundwave to infiltrate NEST and retrieve the last remaining shard of the Old Spark. After crash landing just off Diego Garcia's shore, Ravage vomited large quantities of metal spheres through the facility's ventilation system. These spheres, known as microcons, upon reaching the facility, combined and formed Reedman, the form taken by the swarm of microcons. Reedman managed to steal the share and return to Ravage. When they were spotted, Ravage provided cover fire, killing and injuring many humans in a matter of seconds. Ravage also appeared in Bumblebee. Ravage is super efficient and looks even scarier. He carries a set of weapons like a mace tail, twin heavy machine guns and twin rocket launchers. In close combat, his claws also serve as a deadly weapon. Brains Appearing in Transformers, Duck of the Moon and Transformers, Age of Extinction, Brains is Wheelie's Autobot friend and could transform into a laptop, Lenovo ThinkPad Notebook, and has access to a vast amount of knowledge. He used the gun for self-defense. Although he was an Autobot ally, he was actually created by Shockwave as a drone or brain unit to download data and store it. He eventually left Shockwave and the Decepticons to join the Autobots. Rampage Rampage was a Constructicon who appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen and shared the same fate as the rest of the Constructicons. In the Generation 1 animated series, Rampage was a hyper and impulsive Predacon who faced difficulties in talking and thinking without creating destruction. This trait made it easy for anyone to track him as he mostly left behind a trail of destruction. In the movie, his appearance is similar to his twin, Skipjack. When combined with the other Constructicons, he formed a part of Devastator's leg. In the movie, during the Battle of Egypt, he was shown to kidnap Sam Witwicky's parents. When Rampage failed to combine with the Constructicons, the space was filled by his twin, Skipjack. He carried Cybertronian blasters and tread whips and had adapted to the vehicle mode of a Caterpillar M930 bulldozer. Chromia Chromia was one of the RC sisters who appeared in Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. Chromia was a female Transformer and is surely a tough one. She had a similar mindset to Ironhide and fought alongside him in several battles. During the Battle of Egypt, both the RC sisters died fighting, but she managed to survive. She did not appear in the next Transformers movies, but as stated by Michael Bay, she is most likely killed off-screen. Chromia carried a large laser gun and was a fearless warrior. She adapted to the vehicle mode of Suzuki B-King sport bike. Dispenso Similar to the Xbox 360 bot, Dispensor was also created in the same event. Due to the surge from the Old Spark, a Mountain Dew vending machine transformed into a robot with an arm-mounted can cannon. As soon as it got life, it started shooting soda cans. After the defeat of Megatron, Dispensor started ambushing Sam Witwicky, but was stepped over and killed by Ratchet. Mudflap. Mudflap was an Autobot and the twin brother of Skids who could transform into an ice cream vending machine and into a brick red Chevy Trax. The two brothers did not go well with each other and constant banters often made them crazy. 
However, when it came to fighting, the two made a good combo. During the Battle of Egypt, the two brothers were caught up in a brutal encounter with the Devastator, who tried sucking in the twins into his vortex grinder. Mudflap lost his grip and was swallowed by Devastator. However, in a matter of seconds, Mudflap blasted his way out of Devastator's mouth. Both the twins are hyperactive but make a decent combo during times of crisis. Mudflap is seen to carry a radial arm gun. Hatchet. Hatchet was another member of the Dreads, the most violent and brutal section of the Decepticon forces. He appeared in Transformers, Dark of the Moon, and eventually died at the hands of the Autobots. When Optimus Prime and the Autobots visited the moon to secure Sentinel Prime, three Dreads managed to sneak into Earth and disguise themselves in the vehicle form. They adapted to the design of the 2011 Chevrolet Suburban police van. Although he looked brutal and intimidating, he was a brilliant tactician. When Sentinel Prime was heading towards the Autobot base, he was attacked by the Dreads, mainly for his space bridge technology. While attacked, Sentinel was also guarded by the best of the Autobot forces, Bumblebee, Mirage, Sideswipe and Ironhide. Mirage got hold of Hatchet with his grappling hooks and Bumblebee shot him down, thereby killing him. Amongst notable weapons, he carried twin cannons and a grappling hook. In close combat, he used his sharp fangs and claws. Canopy Canopy appeared in Transformers The Last Night and was shown to be living in a world where all Transformers were hunted down. Canopy could camouflage himself in a pile of rubble, which he usually did to hide from humans. Living under the ruins of Chicago, he made friends with Isabella and Squeaks. Unfortunately, his cover was blown and he was killed by the TRF or the Transformers Reaction Force. As he died, he thanked Isabella for her companionship. When alive, Canopy could also transform into a Volvo articulated dump truck. Skids As mentioned earlier, Skids was the twin brother of Mudflap and an Autobot. Like his brother, Skids was hyperactive and seen mostly engaging in a never-ending argument with his brother. Both the twins suffered from the Cybertronian version of ADHD or Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Both of them were successful in surviving the wrath of the Devastator. His vehicle mode was that of a Chevrolet Spark. Scrap Metal Scrap Metal was a Constructicon and, like the rest, appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Unfortunately, he did not survive till the end and was killed by his own teammates. When the Constructicons reached the Mariana Trench to resurrect Megatron, they needed a Cybertronian to provide the necessary energy and body parts to make Megatron functional. Scrap Metal was the smallest among them and was brutally killed. When alive, Scrap Metal adapted to the vehicle mode of the Volvo EC700C Crawler Excavator. He also carried an excavator arm on the back, claws, a shovel attachment and a cannon. Bulldog Bulldog was an ancient Autobot warrior who had taken part in World War I. He suffered from robot dementia and was under the care of Sir Edmund Burton. Bits and pieces of his body crumble while transforming and owing to his dementia, he believes that the war is still on. Bulldog appears in Transformers The Last Night and could transform into a Mark IV tank. Crankcase The last Dreads member on the list is Crankcase, who was a violent Decepticon and the leader of the Dreads. He appeared in Transformers Dark of the Moon and was considered the worst of all the Dreads. He was amongst the trio who attacked Sentinel Prime on his way back to the Autobot base. After the death of Hatchet, Crankcase and Crowbar were asked to surrender and leave in peace, but vicious and ruthless as they are, they tried to sneak attack the Autobots but were finally killed in the process. Like the other Dreads, Crankcase also had adapted to the vehicle mode of the 2011 Chevrolet Suburban Police Van. He usually carried Cybertronian spears and a chain gun. Sideways Sideways, as depicted in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, was a Decepticon who had supposedly arrived on Earth after the death of Megatron. To disguise himself from the humans, he took refuge behind the giant Constructicon Demolisher. When Nest and the Autobots attacked Demolisher's Energon reading, the huge Constructicon attacked them, exposing Sideways in the process. The RC sisters chased him, but he managed to escape, only to be killed later by Sideswipe by cutting him in half in his vehicle mode. Sideways was a con artist and had adapted to the vehicle mode of the Audi R8. There was plasma sniper rifles, store blades, chain guns and gravity mines among the list of weapons he carried. Berserker Berserker was probably the most vicious and deadliest Decepticon shown in the Transformer films. He appeared in Transformers The Last Night, 
during Megatron's negotiation with the TRF. Megatron had captured two TRF agents and would release them only if the organization released a few of his crew members. When Megatron said the name of Berserker, every member replied with a no, as they risked way too much to capture and contain the bloodthirsty beast after the Battle of Chicago. Surprisingly, Megatron agreed and asked for a different member to be released. Even Megatron agreed with the humans, which can only give us an idea of how catastrophic Berserker could be. Although not much is shown about Berserker, he could transform into a black SUV. Day Trader Day Trader was an Autobot who was a junk trader, part merchant and part mechanic in Cade Yeager's scrapyard. He appeared in Transformers the last night, but there is not much fighting or screen appearance for Day Trader, but after the arrival of Cybertron, in Earth's atmosphere, he delivered a ship to the Autobots at the scrapyard. Scalpel, the Doctor Scalpel, or the Doctor, was a minor antagonist in the film Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. During the movie, when the Constructicons dived into the ocean to resurrect Megatron after Ravage obtained the old spark shard, Scalpel completed the intricate process to revive Megatron. After examining his condition, Scalpel explained that he needed spare parts, after which they looked at scrap metal and killed him to obtain his parts. Later, when Megatron captured Sam, Scalpel was summoned to extract information. The Autobots arrived on time to save Sam, and then Scalpel was not seen. Trench Trench was an Autobot who appeared during the early minutes of the film Transformers The Last Night. He remained hidden in Cade Yeager's scrapyard, and later, when the TRF and Decepticons discovered their refuge and attacked, he transformed into Caterpillar 3 Excavator and tried holding them back along with Hound, buying time for the remaining Autobots to escape. He was not seen later in the film. He carried a shovel and at times used it as a weapon. He also had claws and missiles for fights. Dreadbot Dreadbot was one of the Decepticons whom Megatron freed after blackmailing TRF. He was a monstrous hooligan, usually transformed into Christmas lights. He was arrested by the TRF after he tried robbing a bank, leaving nine dead and money untouched. During the fight in Hong Kong, Dreadbot was eaten by the mighty Dinobot Grimlock. Hightower Hightower was a Constructicon who appeared in Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. He had adapted to the appearance of a gigantic Kobelko crawler crane, and when combined with the other Constructicons, he formed the left arm of the Devastator. Like the other Constructicons, he too shared a similar fate after US Kid Force's railgun shot Devastator. The Lieutenant Appearing in Transformers The Last Night, Lieutenant was a tweaked version of Jetfire. He was one of the several elderly Transformers who lived under the care of Edmund Burton and Cogman. He defended the castle when the TRF attacked. He carried blasters transformed into a Supermarine Spitfire fighter plane. Nokia Bot in the 2007 Transformers film, when Sector 7 was conducting their research on the AllSpark, they used Glenn Whitman's Nokia 933i to test the nature of the cube's capability. The cube gave life to the phone and transformed it into a walking bot known as Nokia Bot. Once granted life, the bot started acting crazy, shooting and going mad. Luckily, it was contained in a sealed chamber and someone managed to electrocute it. Buffalo MPV Decepticon Buffalo MPV was also known as Bone Crusher Imposter owing to his uncanny resemblance with Bone Crusher. In Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, 13 Decepticons reigned outside the pyramids. Buffalo MVP was one of them, and later, during the Battle of Egypt, it engaged in a fight with Ironhide and RC. He was most likely killed during the airstrike conducted by the United States Air Force. Igor. Igor was a Decepticon who seemed like a reprogrammed, decapitated head of a larger Transformer. He was Megatron's pet and stayed with his master in the refugee camp in Africa. Appearing in Transformers Dark of the Moon, he later travelled with Starscream to Washington DC. He even accompanied his master during the Battle of Chicago. There is no further evidence of Igor's death and he might still be alive. Alice. Appearing as an attractive girl, Alice was a Decepticon pretender from the film Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. She tried seducing Sam, but only with the motive of killing him. She found Sam alone and sat on his thighs. After a brief kiss, a tentacle was shown coming out of their body. Hearing sounds of distress, Michele entered the room and saved Sam. Alice attacked them and finally took over her Cybertronian appearance. After giving the humans a tough time, Alice was rammed by the car, driven by Michaela, and killed. 
Junkie. Junkie triplets were KSI manufactured Decepticons created from Transformium by Joshua Joyce. The triplets combined into a Mac Terra Pro garbage truck and attracted the Autobots under Galvatron's orders during the Battle of Hong Kong. DEFCON DEFCON was a Decepticon stationed on the moon. In Transformers Dark of the Moon, he arrived on Earth and joined the Decepticons after receiving Sentinel Prime's orders. He was amongst the many Decepticons who fought against the Autobots in Chicago City. Quite different from the film Devacon in the original Generation 1 Transformers animated series was a self-proclaimed bounty hunter harboring intense hatred for the Decepticons. He was finally destroyed by the Wreckers who shot him several times on the head and took him down once and for all. Insecticon Appearing in Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen and Age of Extinction, Insecticons are robotic insects capable of implanting cerebral strips into the heads of victims. They are an example of altered or re-engineered Cybertronian wildlife. They are mostly seen associated with Decepticons. In the Generation 1 animated series, Megatron highly trusted the Insecticons as their collective effort even managed to take down giants like the Devastator. Did that jerk just dent my car? <laughs> Steering Wheel Bot In the 2007 Transformers film, Steering Wheel Bot was a steering wheel of a Cadillac Escalade that was granted life after a surge from the Allspark was released. It transformed into spider-like legs and grabbed the face of the driver. Watchbot Watchbot was a Decepticon spy attached to Sam's body and his nervous system. It was planted on his wrist by Dylan Gould, who had allied with the Decepticons. The main purpose of the bot was to discover the Autobots' counteract against the Decepticons. Sam Whitwicky could not even inform the Autobots as his girlfriend was held captive by Dylan. Loader In Transformers Dark of the Moon, when Sentinel Prime forced the Earth government to exile the Autobots in exchange for peace, he summoned many Decepticons via his space bridge pillars. One of them was Loader. Loader adapted to the vehicle mode of a Superfund security truck and, as revealed in Transformers Age of Extinction, he was killed in the Battle of Chicago. Reedman as mentioned earlier, Reedman was a form that was taken by the combination of the Microcons. When the Microcons were transferred by Ravage into the Air Force One facility, they formed Reedman and stole the shard of the Allspark. The Decepticon was extremely efficient and violent to some extent. Reedman could adapt to a two-dimensional figure which made him invisible at some angles. Reedman, on being noticed by the human soldiers, killed many of them ruthlessly before being dismantled and disassembled. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Oh.